guys, so today I asked on Twitter whether or not I should do a video about cleaning and maintaining my bioactive tanks, in particular my Crested Gecko, and uh, people said they wanted to see it, so I'm like, okay, I'll film. Uh, so this is basically what I'm going to do because, as you can see, it's long overdue some TLC, and we have a new plant for this tank, so I wanted to put that in as well. Um, I'll be honest with you, I I really love those small frog tanks, you know, with delicate plants, and so they're so incredible, okay? But when you have a crested gecko that weighs around 50 grams, a lot of those plants will just die if they get trampled on too much. So I do go for these bigger plants that take up a lot of room which make this look a little bit ugly but she can get around on these vines these will support her weight so that's why i really love this plant but it does need to be sorted out and before we begin going straight into this um i just like i said in the last video if you could ring the bell if you subscribe even if you're already subscribed because i know some people say they don't get notifications my videos don't appear in the subscription box so if you could please ring that bell i promise i don't over post I usually post every four days um, and that way you don't miss a video but anyway back to this so this is a gone pothos and she wants to come out the tank so it's safe to say that this is one of the more dominant plants in this tank it certainly takes over I love it for a crested gecko but um, it, it you know there's a lot of shade down here um, it's basically just taken over so we need to trim her back a bit another one that's suddenly grown is this bit of bamboo now it's not technically really bamboo it's a lucky bamboo which isn't real bamboo it's a fraud but it is growing towards her food bowl <laughs> so we got to chop that down um and if you saw my video on when i made mini habitats for my isopods and everything that was with loads of leaves basically mainly eaten gone i put quite a bit in there they have now gone the plant we'd be replacing is this snake plant now this is one of the original plants i believe from when i first set up her tank and if you ever want to see any of my tanks being built i have a whole playlist on that but it's grown quite spindly it's got really tall but really spindly now she absolutely loves to sleep on this um and so i feel like i'm replacing an old bed with a new one um so we're gonna take this out and see how it goes First we're going to give everything a chop with these aquarium scissors, the nice little curved ones because these are probably the sharpest, cleanest ones I have uh, and it's going to look quite sparse I think. There's a lot of vines and once those leaves come off it's going to look a bit odd. So keep that in mind as I go along. <laughs> I've cut down a lot of this snake plant just because I'm going to be taking it out anyway and we're going to use the leaves to either grow another one or maybe you know the wood lice will eat it but what I wanted to show you is this these aerial roots that come off the uh, golden pothos and they are they're rock hard like I'm pulling them and they're in this foam they go down to the ground they're amazing but they really really take over You can probably tell by now I don't do subtle. I've hacked this tank and you should not take any advice from me for trimming your tank. I'm just showing you how I do it. Um, there are a lot better channels out there who could probably tell you if this is right or wrong. But what I needed to do is take some of those crispy leaves off. Look how much more light there is now. So if I did plant any lower plants down here, they'll get a lot more light. Another reason I can't add in those delicate nice plants is because my isopods destroy them so I have this magnificent baby tears bush and I this is normally a weed in most places most people hate this because they can't get rid of it you put it in my tank my isopods will eat it all within a day or two so as much as I want that in this tank I don't know if it'll survive now another problem I've been having in this tank and I've had it for a long time I can see one right now come here is spiders they love bioactive tanks they can hide in every like nook and cranny and i can never get them out now they're great if you have something like fungus gnats they can catch all those gnats 
but they just put webs everywhere and I can never seem to get them out. Then they lay eggs and then I get baby uh, spiders all in my room. Like, is that an egg sack? Maybe. The next thing I'm gonna do is I always keep any of these little plastic electrical things. Anytime I get them, even if I don't need them at the time, I will just save them up, put them in the gecko drawer. And they come in really handy for tying plants in places you want them to go. So I need to kind of train this golden pothos a bit because it's getting a little out of control. So I'm gonna quickly do that. I wanted to quickly show you something because basically I thought maybe I could wrap, well, attempt to wrap this around here. Then I realized this is really like anchored and I'm like, why is that? So I'm following this and then it takes me to these aerial roots in this corner and then if you follow the vine and you go along it takes you to these ones. So this this is definitely secure. Also this aerial root was clearly growing downwards when I put this hide in and now it's actually looped underneath and down. I am also going to be taking out this. Now this is another thing that was originally in the tank when I built it, but I have no use for it. There's nothing grown in it and I feel like it's just separating the entire landscape. So I'm gonna just take it out. Oh wow, this is just breaking apart. This is so old. I mean, I definitely think these planters are cool. They have their use, but there was originally an anthrum in here and it did really well and then once it died just nothing grew back so I just want to take this out. Now this is quite cleared out, we haven't finished yet, I want to show you how I clean out the tank and also I'll be introducing new plants but what I have always used is this terrarium glass cleaner uh, by Exoterra. I don't like the thought of doing vinegar and all that because it stinks, uh, so this is the stuff I've always used and it works really, really well. If you want to know how to use it, I do have a whole video dedicated to it. What a video! But it is really good stuff, so I'm going to do that now and put it all on the walls and clean. In terms of cleaning out like a poop and old food and all of that, you may see in some of my tanks as food bowls tipped over and that's because the cleanup crew will eat all of that and clean it for me they clean all her poop I like never find any poop unless it's on the glass which I then clean straight away but yes the cleanup crew are amazing and they do most of my work so as I'm cleaning the tank I need to leave the stuff on so I thought I'd take out the snake plant and as you can see these roots haven't grown much in the entire time they've been in the tank now I don't know if these get particularly long roots um that's fairly long but um, they've been in there a long time so they haven't really grown and maybe that's why they're spindly um, of course if you see any plants in here and you've got some advice for me let me know in the comment section below because not only can you help me but you might help other people so for example if you know stuff about snake plant and you think you see where I'm going wrong let me know below right so I'm gonna be moving in the new snake plant but this particular plant here has been in this plant this tank for ages and hasn't grown or changed at all so I'm gonna move it to somewhere else where it might do better Lyra is looking at me like what on earth are you doing but I am gonna figure out where to put this new snake plant nothing properly grew there's a massive bit of driftwood under here like I'm sure the wood lice absolutely love it and it is caked in wood lice but no wonder roots weren't spreading why have I put that under there I want to keep this in here because clearly the wood lice like it um, and it gives them a bit of a habitat it's just figuring out really where to put it so this snake plant broke off into two so maybe what I'll do is a bit down here I'm gonna put another one near the back and I'm sorry if this isn't filmed amazingly you should see how small of a space I have to work in and I am surrounded by dirt and flowers and leaves I've cut off like one day in the future I really hope I have like just a little reptile room just somewhere where I have a little bit more space because right now oh there's an alarm right now it's um there's not a lot of room. So when everyone keeps asking me, are you gonna get a new pet? No, not yet. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be good for the pet because I just don't have enough room at the moment for another lizard. But maybe in the future. So we're gonna pop that in here. Now, ideally you would wait to let these plants really 
get their roots in and get stable. But Lyra currently lives in here and she probably wouldn't appreciate me kicking her out for a while. I don't know if this one should actually go... Another spider! Where are these coming from? Uh, Lyra is currently up here, not too happy with me. But for the last thing I'm going to do is pop in some leaves and some of the leftover plants that I've already cut off. First I'm going to throw in some custodian fuel. This is by Arcadia. And the wood lice go crazy for this and I'm not using it properly because you're meant to like push them into the dirt spaced apart but they, the, the wood lice will just drag it to wherever they want. So I'll throw a bit of that in. And then we've got our leaves. Now if you watched that video of mine before, as I said, firstly, I love that sound. And secondly, I like to crunch these up because I feel like they're quite big. So they can make the tank feel small if you put them in as they are. So I'm gonna go around and add in these leaves. And any of these little leaves that, oh, not so little leaves, I cut out, I'm gonna sort of shred up because the isopods will also break these down and this will make the soil more fertile. So it will take a little bit longer than the dried ones, but everything helps, you know? We are finally done. I feel like this took like at least an hour and I've had to have the window shut because uh, it's quite windy outside so I am absolutely boiling but I didn't want to mess up the audio. Um, but yes, this this tank now feels taller, if that makes sense, can you see? I'm happy how it's come out, it's very different but I think she'll like it and it'll give uh, more light to the ground and hopefully more plants will grow. She's still up there, not too happy with me. Um, but if you watch my video where I talked about different leopard gecko setups and the pros and cons, one of the cons I did put down for a bioactive tank is the maintenance. And I said in that video, it's not, you know, it depends because some people see it as a pro, some would find it annoying. I actually like spending that time build, like building the tanks, rearranging them, trimming them, but maybe I should do it more often. If you know how to make these golden pothos more bushy, then maybe I should be trimming them, but let me know below. But yeah. My room's a mess, so I need to go clean that, but I hope you've enjoyed this little video. If you are debating whether to go bioactive with a crested gecko, I would 100% recommend it. I absolutely love it, and I know Lyra does too. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and goodbye. Goodbye.